<laughs> oh, that's too bright. It hurts my eyes. That light clearly hates black people because I'm white. The Kyle Rittenhouse case is now closed. After a year of media propaganda saying Rittenhouse is a murderous white supremacist who drove to shoot peaceful protesters at a BLM riot, the verdict is in. Not guilty on all counts. But do you think it's fair that Kyle Rittenhouse was let off for shooting three people in self-defense? Or do you think he's a murderous white supremacist? And what is there to learn from all this? But before you make up your mind, here are seven things you should know about the Kyle Rittenhouse phenomenon. And some of them will surprise you. What happened? It all went down the night of August 25th, 2020. There was a BLM riot, AKA super peaceful protest in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Kyle Rittenhouse showed up with an AR-15. He ended up shooting three people. Two of them lost their lives. One was wounded and survived. The media spin. Immediately, the leftist media, aka the media, were broadcasting headlines like Kyle Rittenhouse is a white supremacist mass shooter and white supremacists drove to Kenosha to shoot BLM protesters and open fire in the crowd and black people died because of Kyle Rittenhouse. Racial justice must be served. And it wasn't just the mainstream media trying to influence the public to see Kyle Rittenhouse as a white supremacist. There were exciting contributions from big tech. We'll get to those in a minute. But first, the facts. The facts. That night, Kyle Rittenhouse was asked to be there by the owner of a car lot in order to protect his cars. After 100 of his cars were torched the night before by peaceful protesters after police had abandoned the town to rioters. Apparently, the car lot owner didn't think it was very peaceful of the rioters to set all his cars on fire for some reason. And it turns out all three men that Kyle shot were violent rioters. Oh, and they were white, not black. Not even a little bit, just very white. Now, who were the rioters that got shot and what happened? The wounded rioter that got shot and survived is Gage Grosskreutz, a member of Antifa. During the trial, Gage testified that he pointed his gun at Kyle Rittenhouse's head before Rittenhouse pointed his gun at Gage and shot him in the arm. Hmm, starting to smell like self-defense. Rioter Anthony Huber got shot and died. At that time, people were yelling, kill him, about Kyle Rittenhouse. That's when Mr. Huber attacked Kyle Rittenhouse with his skateboard, swinging it like a baseball bat, hitting him once in the neck and once in the head, and then tried to take Rittenhouse's gun. That's when Rittenhouse shot him and killed him. Fun fact, Anthony Huber was a convicted felon that previously served two prison terms. And rioter Joseph Rosenbaum was shot and died. A witness testified that earlier in the night, Rosenbaum said to he and Kyle Rittenhouse, if I catch you guys alone tonight, I'm going to f***ing kill you. Rosenbaum was apparently a very honest person because true to his word, later that night, he was aggressively chasing Rittenhouse down and while lunging for his rifle, Rittenhouse shot him in self-defense. Rittenhouse later testified, if I would have let Mr. Rosenbaum get my gun, he would have killed me. Well, I mean, that is what Rosenbaum said he would do. Also might be of interest to know, earlier that day, Joseph Rosenbaum was released from a hospital after a suicide attempt. Oh, he was also a pedophile and convicted sex offender as he had sexually assaulted five young boys between the ages of nine and 11. Three model members of BLM. Again, if we're pretending facts are still politically correct, which I know is a lot to ask in the time we live in, none of the people Rittenhouse shot were black. They were all white, and it was all very legally justifiable self-defense against known criminals. Well, a Kyle Rittenhouse was a white supremacist in other ways, right? Of course, just, you know, one problem. The FBI went through his phone and found zero evidence of him being a white supremacist. So like, in other ways, it, he wasn't. If he was, he'd certainly be the dumbest white supremacist of all time. There's certainly stiff competition for that title in that group. I hate black people, so I'm gonna shoot a bunch of white people. Now the brainwash program the media has some people under might have you wanting to ask right about now, well, I think he was a white supremacist. How do you know all this, JP? Well, I mean, it's just evidence and sworn testimonies from witnesses in a court, so. Now, about all these facts, Zuby tweeted, I can't get over the fact that a white guy shot three other white guys in self-defense and the US media has turned it into a black issue. 
sorcery. I would say Zuby is a friend of mine that does his own critical thinking. But because he's a black man that doesn't let the media do his thinking for him, the media would probably tell you he's the black face of white supremacy. Which is just as accurate as saying fire is the wet face of water. <laughs> Right, media? Big Tech convicted Kyle Rittenhouse right away. Now, with these previous facts proven in a court of law, the always above the law Big Tech joined the mainstream media for some fun in very ambitiously and equally inaccurately making Kyle Rittenhouse out to be a murderous white supremacist. How so? Well, after that night in Kenosha, GoFundMe shut down Rittenhouse's fundraising campaign to cover his legal expenses. And Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter banned any form of support for Kyle Rittenhouse, censoring everything and even shutting down people's accounts that were saying things about Rittenhouse that later turned out to be actually very true as proven in a court of law. But now that the facts are out and Rittenhouse has been proven innocent, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter are at least still propagating their misinformation by continuing to ban any form of support for Rittenhouse as of the making of this video. Big Tech just hates it when people aren't white supremacists, which kind of makes it seem like they like white supremacists. Joe Biden also convicted Kyle Rittenhouse right away. Having never heard of due process or the US Constitution during his 50 years in the Senate, after the shooting and during Biden's presidential campaigning while hiding out in his basement, he tweeted out a video that had Rittenhouse's image spliced in along with tiki torch carrying white supremacists. His tweet said, there's no other way to put it. The President of the United States refused to disavow white supremacists on the debate stage last night. Biden used this tweet making Rittenhouse out to be a white supremacist during his campaign to garner the support of some people in the public to make them believe that Biden is the guy against racism. One thing's for sure, one of these two people has a very strong track record of white supremacy. I won't tell you which one but it's the one that gave the eulogy at the funeral for a KKK grandmaster and recruiter and is potentially single-handedly responsible for more black men needlessly going to prison than any other person by sponsoring the 1994 crime bill. And he's the one that said Obama is the first mainstream African-American who is bright and articulate and clean and a nice looking guy. And he said, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. Oh, and he's the one that also said this. You know, I've adopted the attitude of the great Negro at the time. Whoa, he said that. Well, I'm sure it was a mistake and he'd never say it again. At the time, picture the Negro League went on. Jesus, he said it again. So which one is the white supremacist? Well, I'm not gonna tell you because, oh. I just, I forget, actually. But it is worth noting that many legal experts are expecting Rittenhouse to sue Biden, the mainstream media, and big tech for millions of dollars for intentionally defaming his character and kind of manipulating half the country into hating him based on lies. The trial. Now, even though the mainstream media, big tech, and Biden don't think there need to be trials anymore because they like to play judge, jury, and executioner, there was still a trial for some reason. In it, there were five charges brought against Kyle Rittenhouse. First degree reckless homicide, two counts of first degree intentional homicide, and two counts of first degree reckless endangerment. The judge also dismissed two additional weapons charges. In the trial's conclusion, the jury found Kyle Rittenhouse not guilty on all counts. But before the trial was over, the prosecutor named Binger did manage to point an AR-15 at people in the courtroom. Hey, get your finger off the trigger there, sport. I think we need to charge this guy before you Alec Baldwin someone. What did we learn? Do you think it's fair that Kyle Rittenhouse was found completely innocent, or do you think he's a murderous white supremacist? Now that's a question it's important for you to make up your own mind about not for someone to make up your mind for you about. But the more important question is, what can we learn from all this? Well, for starters, we learn it's not a good idea to go to a riot with a gun to play crowd control while people are rioting, carrying guns, and destroying property. And we also learned it's not a good idea to go rioting and destroying property. And did we learn that the mainstream media and big tech have earned our trust? 
Or did we learn that they purposely deceive us and they've earned our mistrust? Right from the get-go, they were aggressively trying to manipulate people and had seen Kyle Rittenhouse as a white supremacist committing hate crimes against black people, which was then proven in a court of law to be verifiably untrue. Yet even after that, CNN posts this to their homepage. Trustworthy or deceptive? Why would the media do this? Well, if we can stretch our minds into reality for just a moment, we can realize the media no longer does journalism and has been and is still trying to divide our nation, amongst other ways, not by reporting on a race war, but by creating one. And they seem to be very enthused to further this divide by labeling people who see reality rather than their narrative as either a racist, a conspiracy theorist, or a white supremacist. And don't get me wrong, White supremacy is a vile act that should be condemned. No question about that. And labeling things white supremacy that aren't for your own political gain and agenda is also a vile act that should be condemned. So why does the media wanna divide our nation rather than unite our nation? Well, maybe it's because a divided people are a very controllable people. And maybe through all this, we've learned to ask, Who's funding the media to divide our nation? And are those same people wanting to have control over the public? If so, it makes sense that they would want us divided and they would do so through their carefully orchestrated propaganda disguised as the news. As it's been said, whoever controls the narrative controls the population. The sharing of biased and false, false news has, has become, become all too common, common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming, some media Unfortunately, some members of the media use their platforms to push their own personal bias and agenda to control exactly what people think. And this is extremely dangerous to our democracy. And perhaps above all else, not the Kyle Rittenhouse trial, but the deception surrounding it has taught us that moving forward, you'll be much better served to turn off the news and turn on your own critical thinking so you can be united with your own thoughts and therefore be united with your fellow brothers and sisters. In my humble opinion, there's a lot to learn from all this. So we can either learn it or we can repeat our mistakes. The choice is yours. Mm. Censorship is not part of our family values. If you want to help defeat censorship, I'd love to have you join my email newsletter list. Just go to awakenwithjp.com slash join me. I'll see you on the inside. Yeah, she does this thing where she always buys plants and then kills them. I don't know if it's a disorder or what the deal is, but... We rolling? Yeah. Hey, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Magnesium Breakthrough by Bioptimizers. I truly love Magnesium Breakthrough for one key reason. I love feeling great. And the principal enemy of feeling great in all of our lives is stress. We know if you wanna feel horrible, be depressed, be angry all the time, have crappy relationships, have no purpose in life, and be the bane of everyone else's existence, then you want high stress levels. But if you're like me and like to be uninclusive to feeling terrible, then you know you wanna have low stress levels so you can feel happy, relax inside your body, and have great interactions in your life. And you're probably saying, well, JP, how am I gonna reduce my stress, brother? That's where magnesium breakthrough comes into play because there's one key nutrient that can effectively reduce your stress and that nutrient is magnesium. But before you go there and say, well, JP, I have magnesium, I don't feel stress. <laughs> the problem is you need seven forms of quality magnesium in order to effectively reduce your stress. And that's what magnesium breakthrough delivers to you. I take magnesium breakthrough every single evening to help me relax and unwind so I can feel and function my best. <laughs> If you wanna join me in feeling and functioning your best with Magnesium Breakthrough, there's never been a better time to grab yours because during the month of November, you get 20% off along with other free gifts and goodies on select purchases. To take advantage of this best deal ever, just go to magnesiumbreakthrough.com slash awaken and use the discount code awaken and enjoy feeling good.